Hello, my name is Dr. Art Rastenhead. Today I'll be discussing focal therapy, and more specifically, our gold nanoparticle directed ablation trial for prostate tissue. Before we begin the talk, it's always important to review my disclosures. Nanospectra Biosciences is the sponsor for the trial that we're performing here at Mount Sinai. The technology used in conjunction with Nanospectra was provided by Invivo. For any questions, you can tweet at me or contact me via email. Common questions are asked by my patients after a fusion biopsy is that, if you can see it and you biopsy it, doc, why can't you just treat the area? Many patients are concerned about the side effects of whole gland therapy, which include urinary incontinence and erectile dysfunction. Our goal is to evaluate and investigate the use of focal therapy, the new way forward to avoid these side effects commonly associated with prostate cancer treatments. Well, prostate cancer itself is on a spectrum. There's many options for localized prostate cancer. If you move towards the right, active surveillance, you run the possibility of cancer progression, the psychological burden, the cost of surveillance itself, and the associated side effects. However, if you move to the left, you have certainly control of cancer. However, you have the risk of incontinence, erectile dysfunction or impotence, possible damage to the rectum, cost, and worst of all is over-treatment, treating patients that may not need their cancer treated. Well, there's been many correlations made between breast cancer and prostate cancer. Breast and prostate cancer are the two most common cancers in men and women respectively. Therefore, there's some correlations have been made. However, I'd like to discuss them on the next slide. Let's talk about breast cancer. The comparison between radical mastectomy, which was the standard of care at the time, versus lumpectomy. They found that there's no difference in outcomes between each of the approaches. And the second, there's less morbidity associated with lumpectomy, but did carry a risk of local regional occurrence, but did not change the mortalities in these patients. And what's similar with prostate cancer is that recurrences can occur 20 to 30 years after initial therapy. So it's very difficult to determine what the cancer-specific survival is of these new treatments. So why not the male lumpectomy? Looking at breast cancer as lumpectomy, it's important to understand this was a multimodal approach, a combination of surgery and radiation. Our goal with focal therapy and designing these new therapies is to hopefully avoid the side effects of surgery and radiation with obtaining equivalent outcomes. There are certain correlations between prostate cancer and breast cancer. Regarding prostate cancer, how do we identify candidates for focal therapy? This is usually achieved through a biopsy process of transperineal mapping biopsies or MR ultrasound fusion guided prostate biopsies. We also stage these patients with multiparametric MRI of the prostate if a fusion biopsy was done. And then I'll discuss how we follow patients up, when to re-biopsy and when to restage. Dr. Ahmed from the University of College London sought to evaluate his patients that underwent whole gland therapy via prostatectomy, could they have been candidates for focal therapy? Their conclusion was approximately 51% of these patients could have been suitable for focal therapy and avoided whole gland treatment. Prostate cancer is a complex disease. Low grade prostate cancer usually does not result in a patient's death. After the Gleason scoring system was revised, no patients with Gleason 6 prostate cancer died within 15 years of the disease. I think it's important to understand that we, as urologists, interventional radiologists, urologic oncologists, our goal is to identify these patients and other patients that could benefit from active surveillance and or focal therapy. So what's changed? Physicians are concerned about over-treatment. We're able to better visualize the prostate or look inside to identify areas that are suspicious for cancer, biopsy them, and now we're able to follow these lesions over time. And we're always concerned about the side effects of the traditional therapies, as discussed before, with erectile dysfunction and urinary incontinence. This is a trial from the University of College London, looking at the use of high-intensity focused ultrasound for the treatment of prostate cancer. It's important to understand that as we set these new thresholds for who are candidates, this group treated patients of the Gleason 4 plus 3 prostate cancer.
But what's difficult about HIFU is that the technology, there can be skip lesions due to limitations with targeting and gating associated with the procedure. Respiratory motion can cause areas of prostate to go under-treated. In their results, 77% of the areas treated had no cancer. But it's important to understand that there was an absence of clinically disease in 92% of the areas treated. This is always difficult when designing new technologies to make sure that we get homogeneous ablation of our intended locations within the prostate. This is a series of laser ablation from John Trachtenberg. The benefits of laser ablation is that it's a homogeneous area that can be observed under MR thermometry to make sure that you achieve temperatures high enough to destroy prostate cancer tissue. The limitation with all these technologies is the targeting and identification of the lesion that you're treating during the therapy. In their series, four patients did have residual disease after treatment. It's important to understand this was very early in the research process and they did not have MR fusion biopsy technology to confirm lesions were cancer along the entire region of interest outlined by the MRI. The second phase one focal laser ablation trial was conducted at the MCI. Dr. Peter Pinto was the lead investigator and I was also involved in this project. They evaluated 15 patients with low risk disease. 10 patients had no tumor at the ablation site and two patients had residual disease. What was different about this trial? All patients had 3T and MRIs and were diagnosed by fusion biopsy and followed up with fusion biopsies of the regions of interest that were treated. It's always important as we strive to develop new therapies that they were able to better identify and target these lesions during treatment. MR thermometry is used to be able to keep track of the regions of interest that are treated during the trial. Taking it one step further is that we've developed a transperineal MR fusion biopsy platform. We are now able to perform biopsies through the perineum with lower infection rates. But that's just the beginning of the story. Using this information from the biopsy itself, confirming where the prostate's localized with respect to the lesion that needs to be biopsied, this brings back the same question. Doc, if you can see it, and you can biopsy it, why can't you treat it? So using this technology, we're developing new therapies. In collaboration with Nanospectra Biosciences, we're testing in a phase two trial, aura shell particles, which are essentially gold nanoparticles. What's unique about a gold nanoparticle? It's actually able to absorb light energy and create heat different than the surrounding tissues so we can obtain a focused Typically, optical energy is used to create heat. This is a homogeneous ablation similar to the laser ablation trials. What's different now is that the optical energy wavelength is focused on the gold particle and we're able to have tumor specific ablations. As seen here in the graph on the lower screen, if you look, the wavelengths, the amount of energy that is absorbed is different than water and blood so we're able to have a focused ablation zone. Going back to the original patient, looking at the area of the biopsy, we confirmed that that was prostate cancer. Now we're able to use the grid to localize specific areas to place the fibers in to excite the gold nanoparticles that have been deposited previously. I'll describe how the technology works in a moment, but this is just to give you an idea how we can approach this in a very stable fashion to create a specific ablation zone, which is guided by the gold nanoparticles. This is a short video outlining how the technology works. These are the gold nanoparticles. They're very small, especially when you compare them to a red blood cell. The day before your treatment, these gold nanoparticles are infused intravenously, like if you were dehydrated, receiving normal saline infusion, this is the same way. These particles circulate through your bloodstream. What's interesting is that prostate tumors have 
leaky vessels, so the gold particles are actually able to be deposited within these prostate lesions. The following day, we present and we perform the approach the same way we did the biopsy, a transperineal approach using the MR ultrasound fusion system to aid in the guidance for the procedure. The ultrasound helps us localize the lesion. These laser catheters are able to be placed within the lesion. Once in, we're able to excite the gold nanoparticles, as I described before in the previous slide. This excitement is heat, and it focally ablates the prostate lesion that we've targeted. Sometimes in patients, multiple catheters are used. Typically, we place the catheters all at the same time to keep the prostate still and to avoid any movement. At three to seven days afterwards, there's involution or the body removes the dead tissue after the ablation. Our study design is as follows. This is a phase two study, open label, multi-center, single dose study of oral ACE therapy via nanoparticle directed laser excitation. We're evaluating the ability to target and destroy prostate tissue using MR ultrasound fusion imaging. Our study endpoints. Our endpoints are the things that researchers look at. We want to determine the ability of the MR fusion guided oral ACE therapy to conform to the shape and the volume of identified tumor boundaries at three months. Our secondary endpoints are the typical things that we look at in prostate cancer patients. We want to see how you're doing and to see if there's any side effects from the treatment. So who's eligible? This is a brief overview. Patients with low to intermediate risk prostate cancer that's correlated with MRI visible lesions. We're treating up to Gleason 7 prostate cancer with normal PSA and or PSA densities. Up to two lesions can be positive on biopsy. What's important that you can't have any disease outside of your prostate or extra prostatic extension. And these are just some of the criteria which will be reviewed with patients during clinic visits. It's always important to identify the best patients for the therapy, so we do exclude some patients as patients with three or more lesions, with severe lower urinary tract symptoms, allergic to the gold nanoparticles, or at higher risk for surgical procedures. How do we follow up the patients after ablation? At 48 to 72 hours, the patients undergo an MRI to assess the ablation zone. At three months, we perform a targeted only biopsy of the region to confirm that the area was treated. At one year, the standard MRI fusion biopsy with 12 core biopsies performed as if the patient was on active surveillance to confirm that there's no disease within the lesion, as well as there's no new disease that is detected on other areas of the prostate. In summary, imaging and fusion biopsies have changed the way we think about prostate cancer. Focal therapy is still investigational. Evaluating these new technologies is difficult. High food has been associated with some skip lesions or missing areas of cancer intended to be treated during therapy. Laser therapy has no skip lesions and is a homogeneous ablation zone. But what we all have to overcome is our difficulties with targeting. And the goal of the gold nanoparticle trial is to improve how we target the ablation zones or their areas that are confirmed to be prostate lesions. Why focal therapy overall? The goal is to avoid overtreatment and the side effects and the lack of impact on the survival associated with the standard therapies. I've hoped you enjoyed this talk on focal therapy and more specifically our gold nanoparticle ablation trial here at Mount Sinai. For more information, please visit our website or contact our clinical offices to schedule an appointment.